Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting video 8.3 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This video addresses wiring and specifically how to wire through areas of tortuosity. Wiring is the eighth of the 14 steps of percutaneous coronary intervention, and it is performed in 10 steps that are discussed in detail in video 8.1. In this video, we'll address how to advance a guide wire through areas of tortuosity. This is an example of a highly angulated vessel. We'll discuss four potential solutions. The first one is to use a different wire with a different bend. The second one is to use a microcatheter, typically angulated or dual lumen. The third one is to use the reversed guide wire, or otherwise called hairpin wire technique. And the fourth one is to use a deflection balloon. Before going over these techniques, it is important to discuss about the view used for wiring. This is an example of a case in which wiring of the PDA was challenging in the LAO cranial view. However, once we used a lateral view, now the origin of the PDA is much easier to appreciate and that helped actually direct the same guide wires into the PDA. So using different views that open up the bifurcation or the area of tortuosity can be very useful for going with a wire through those areas. Going to the first one about the importance of a guide wire. Needless to say, if there is difficulty in advancing a wire, using a torqueer provides better wire control. In terms of wire selection, the most commonly used wires for going through tortuosity are workhorse wires, often with hydrophilic coating. Also, polymer jacketed non-tapered wires are commonly used, such as the Whisper, the Bilot 50, the Fielder FC, and the Sion Black. And also the Suo 03, which is the softest wire available at 0.3 grams tip and hydrophilic coating. These are the three categories of wires that are commonly used. Quite often, a workhorse wire, especially one with hydrophilic coating, such as um, uh, the BMW turn track run through will actually go through areas of tortuosity. However, the polymer jacketed wires uh, are more slippery and may be able to go also in areas of tortuosity. And SUO3 is very flexible and is actually the wire of choice for retrograde crossing through epicardial collaterals, but can be used in any type of highly tortuous coronary vessel. Creating the right bend is important, and this can be done by using the introducer. This way, both small and large bends can be created on the guide wire. This is an example in which uh, wiring through an angulation was challenging. This was a patient in whom the wire we wanted to advance to the LAD. However, he wanted to go straight into the circumflex. One solution would be to push the guide more to point it towards the LAD. Uh, the other one was to use this uh, Pilot 200 wire, which is less likely to prolapse, and eventually the wire made it through without prolapsing into the circumflex, but instead it did travel uh, into the LAD, and wiring was successful. This is the SUO3 wire, again 0.3 grams with hydrophilic coating, very useful for highly tortuous vessels. This is such an example. This was a patient in whom retrograde CTOPCI was um, per being performed. We want to go through this very tortuous 360 degree angle um, distal epicardial collateral. And this is the SUO3 wire. Initially it goes down the wrong pathway, but eventually it um, starts taking that 360 degree bend, goes into a small branch, it's pulled back, it's redirected, and eventually it does track nicely down that vessel. It does select some other branches, but eventually with redirection, the wire could be advanced all the way into the PDA. So SUO3, very soft, very atraumatic, very safe wire to be used for wiring through highly tortuous vessels. Going to solution number two, which is use of a microcatheter. Let's not forget that um, wiring is done through a telescoping system, and although typically this is the sheath and the guide, if we add a guide extension in the microcatheter that provides extra support for wiring through tortuosity or other difficult to wire lesions. There are five types of microcatheters that will be discussed in a separate video, but the ones commonly used for vessels with tortuosity are either the standard microcatheters or the angulated and the dual lumen microcatheters. 
and there are several types of those microcatheters available, but it is important in every cath lab to have at least one of these devices available from each of the five categories. This was a case of a patient with end-stage renal disease and significant tortuosity in his coronary arteries. He had a very tortuous right coronary artery that was, as you can imagine, extremely challenging to wire. However, by using a microcatheter and a soft, non-tapered, polymer jacketed wire, a whisper wire, that's an old case, we were able to get through that lesion and successfully perform PCI. However, the microcatheters more commonly used for tortuous lesions are the angulated microcatheters, and three of them are currently available. One is the Venture. One can turn the back knob and turn the tip up to 90 degrees. The second is the Swift Ninja. can go up to 180 degrees in both directions. And the third one are the preformed Supercross catheter, of which the Supercross 120 is the one most commonly used. Uh, the Venture provides the most support. It's the stiffest microcatheter than all of them. At the same time, it uh, may have slightly increased risk of vessel injury when rotated after the tip has been bent. Also, dual lumen microcatheters can be used for wiring through tortuosity, such as side branches. And uh, this is an example. Uh, this was a patient in whom DK crash is being performed. After crushing the stent in the diagonal, it's hard to get back in. But then by using a dual lumen twin pass microcatheter, we're able to advance the guide wire into the side branch without much difficulty. Like uh, with any other case, understanding where we are going is critical. This is an example where we're using a microcatheter, but we're having a very hard time advancing a guide wire in an acute MI patient. But then eventually it turns out the course of the vessel was more medial than the original course of the wire. And once the wire was redirected to the more medial course, then wire was, wiring was successfully achieved. So understanding where you are helps you to get where you want to go. The third technique for going through tortuosity is the reversed guide wire technique. It's been 12 years, is the initial description by Kawasaki. The reversed guide wire technique is performed by using a polymer jacketed, non tapered guide wire, such as the Fielder FC or the Sion Black. The wire is bent approximately 3 cm from its tip, and then sometimes a secondary bend is placed at the tip. And then what is inserted through the introducer is actually the knuckle the looped guide wire at the 3 cm point from the tip. So when the guide wire exits from the guide catheter, it looks knuckled. This knuckle is advanced past the origin of the angulated vessel to which we want to get to. And then when the wire is being withdrawn, the bend unfolds and then allows wiring of that angulated vessel. This is the illustration of how to create the bend on the polymer jacketed wire. And typically, the introducer is inserted through the TUI with this uh, bend uh, leading the way. This can also be performed by using a dual lumen microcatheter. This is an example of a dual lumen microcatheter with a polymer jacketed wire protruding 3 cm and then advanced through the TUI, creating the knuckle 3 cm from the tip. This is uh, an example of how this works. We have now a wire going into a branch distal to the distal cap of a CTO. The wire is looped and then when it comes back, in, it unfolds and enters into the distal right coronary artery. There is a variation of this technique. It's called a streamline reverse wire technique. And this is very similar to what we discussed, but the difference is that uh, the loop is actually created inside the coronary tree by using a dual lumen microcatheter. So this is an example of a highly angulated OM lesion. The guide wire is advanced into another branch. A dual lumen microcatheter is advanced over that wire. And then it's um, actually pushed over a different, micro, a different uh, wire further down, creating that loop in the wire. And then once the wire is being pulled back, then that uh, angulated segment enters into the uh, branch that we want to get through, allowing wiring of this difficult to get to branch. This is an example. The creation of the loop is done in this branch. And then by advancing the dual loop microcatheter, there is now a knuckle distal to the vessel that we want to get through. And then when we are coming back, that wire enters into that branch, successfully wiring this angulated, obtuse, marginal branch. 
and finishing up with a fourth solution for wiring through tortuosity, which is to use a deflection balloon. What this balloon does is it blocks the way to the wire to follow the pathway of least resistance, instead creates a pivoting point for the guide wire to deflect and then enter into the angulated branch. A classic example for using this technique is when going retrograde through Safenus vein graft, in which case we often want to go through a very tight angle retrograde into the vessel. The wire, of course, wants to go straight down into the distal vessel. So one way to prevent this is to inflate a balloon in the vessel distal to the origin of the angulated branch, and then the wire bounces off that balloon and then can be advanced together with a microcatheter into the angulated vessel. So to summarize, there are several ways to advance guide wires through areas of tortuosity. Those are to use various types of guide wires and various types of bends. Number two, to use a microcatheter, either standard or angulated or dual lumen. The third one is to use the reverse guide wire technique. And the fourth is to use a deflection balloon technique. Having knowledge and expertise in these techniques can truly facilitate wiring of highly tortuous lesions. Thank you.